everybody, I'm Jason from Geek Culture, and today I'm going to be uh, welcomed by Chris Palmer. Hey, Chris. How's it going, man? Hello. <laughs> Good, so, thanks. Yeah, so Chris, you, uh, you, you're an artist. You know, I guess that's just the best way to describe it. I don't really know how to... Uh, I mean, you do painting and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of it's miniatures and those kind of things. Right. If you haven't uh, seen any of his stuff, you said you have an Instagram, right? Correct. It's uh, Antique Geek Twenty Six. Okay. Yeah, you got a lot of really awesome stuff on there. Uh, you're doing Facebook. Uh, you also do cosplay and stuff like that. So we'll talk about kind of all those things as we're going along. Um, what? So have you always been painting miniatures? Like I know you, you've been playing Forty K and stuff like that because we met through the store. Um, yep. So have how long have you been playing miniatures games? Is that something you got into recently or? I don't know. Um... I started miniature games. I'm sure you remember old Hero Quest board game. Yeah, actually, I have it in my closet. I have, uh, Except, yeah. yeah, that's actually the first game set I painted. So a long time. Actually, I think I have some of the miniatures packed away still somewhere. I used cotton balls to make smoke around those ugly skeletons' feet. And, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but before that, I was doing modeling, like planes and stuff like that. So really, my my brother was really big into that when I was a kid. He. Uh, he would glue all the pieces together, and, and and my his room always smelled like modeling glue. Um, <laughs> he I don't know if he did so much of the painting, but he really loved building those planes. So that that's where it started. You started doing like the model planes. I mean, did you yep. do train sets or anything like that, or did you kind of just stick to the? No, I never did train sets. My main was just model planes and mm -hmm. some car, just you know, little stuff like that. My parents. Um, always bought me and, and yes your room always smelled like you were on something so. yeah right <laughs> right but which if you ever met my brother you would know that's the complete opposite of anything that he would ever he would ever yep. do um so what led into you then going into miniatures and stuff like that <clears throat> well it was um you know as, as you get a little older uh, older i say 13 we started playing me and my buddy started playing dungeons and dragons right and right all, all that good stuff and you see all the pictures and Buy Heroes Quest and saw all the cool little minis there, and um, and then you know, you're like, hey, let's just paint them up. <laughs> so, right. really, most of my time was self-taught, but then in my teens, I met a couple that played a lot of D and D. They did; a, they were really, really good at painting. Um, and then I sat down with them and painted my own miniature for Dungeons and Dragons and started painting up some monsters with them. They were kind of showing me some tricks and tips and that's what really got me started probably when I was around 14. Yeah, it always seems like it's a couple. Like we have uh, people local here. There's, I think it's Wolf Lord Studios is one of them. Yeah, see with me, my girlfriend wants nothing to do with it. So I'm trying to trick her into painting. Well, maybe not trick her. So if she's watching this, I would really like her to <laughs> maybe not trick. Hey, Jeff, you can go back and edit that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get her into it because she knows how to like pull colors from things. Like it's not as as simple as oh I want to I want to make this blue and then have this be a certain color. Like you have to use this color to pull from this color to do three different steps. And that's always my issue is like my brain doesn't let me slow down enough to be like to do this to do this. Do you like did you find it? Is it naturally like were you? Do you think you were a good painter? Did you did, did you learn things? I mean, you you learn things over time, but I mean, did you you feel like you found it easy? Um, is it something that that couple helped you? Like you said, learn most of the stuff you learned today. You've learned today, or what? they helped me with the technique on brushing and you know holding a brush and stuff like that. The um, color mixing that's kind of a it's not self taught. My it was for me, but it's kind of you kind of an eye for it. Kind of like nowadays when I'm painting a model, I uh, a lot of times I just start painting. I don't even know what colors I'm going to put where yet. I just know it's going to have this color flesh tone, and I just start working on the flesh tone. And then I'm as I'm working at it, then I start envisioning the what I want the model to look like in the end. Um, it's funny that you talk about colors though, because uh, my wife's definitely not into painting, but I do pull her thoughts a lot. Like you know, hey, I'm I'm going yellow here. What would be a good what color would set off, you know, this part of the model, and she'll just throw some colors out there, and it help, that helps that a lot. Yeah, yeah, because you have things that's the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's, I'll show you on the screen, and then everybody can kind of see the picture. Um, this guy. Oh, yeah. So, that, uh, what's the name of this model? That's the Orc, um... It's like the Maw, or... Maw Crusher. No, Maw Crusher, there you go. So, yeah. that piece is 
is just absolutely fantastic. Um, that's one of my favorite ones that you've done. I showed my son it and he absolutely loved it. Uh, how long did it take you to, uh, to do that piece? That one took me, well, I can't, it's hard for me to judge time, but I think around a month total, maybe yeah. a half a month, but it took me about a month. That one, that one was pre I was actually, that was a commission, and to be honest with you, I was super sad when it left. Yeah, so the commission paintings, though, you were saying, um, it, it, it's got to be, you, how many have you done? Is that something that you do quite often, or you do, because I know you're more of a, you like to do more of a personal painting. Yeah, actually, you normally when I'm working on my own stuff, I got two commissions going on right now. Um, here lately, it's been it's what we call, I guess, speed commissions, where they just want, they want, actually, that's the wrong word for it. They want tabletop ready commissions where they look good, but, you know, there's six colors on it and they look great on the table because they're not looking for, you know, the high detailed work. Right, right, the, right. The current Blood Bowl team I'm working on, that one he wants a lot of good details on. And that one's been, that's been three phases of painting different, he's been giving me different sets. And that one's been super, super fun. Like I just got him finishing painting a hot dog vendor, a goblin hot dog vendor. And that's uh, that's actually the picture that I'm looking at right now. I was going to ask you, because I, I was really stoked that you were into uh, Blood Bowl. I didn't know that you were, you were into the game, so I was really happy about that. Um, yep. But... Are you playing it, or this? You said this is just a commission one. Do you have That's your own team? Commission. But I do have a lizard man team. Okay, because I've seen you paint them before. Yeah. Uh, and these are these are just yeah the little the scorekeepers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Those are. That's a whole um. The guy that he won, he got that team when he went to um, Dublin, I believe. And, uh, it's a whole thing. He has the team. He has all the side guys. He has the two announcers that was in um, the Blood Bowl video game. He has those two miniatures, which I just got done painting um, the ogre for that one. So right, right. So yeah, but those are super fun. They're super animated. I, I like the. Well, I mean, some of the painting 40k can get kind of you know you're painting the same model. You're making a squad of 30. Right, even when you're making a separate squad too, it's just still like you're kind of painting. Like they all have kind of their own theme, you know. They're all like the same theme. Like you're, with the hot dog vendor, uh, it, it's great because his like pants are slouched, so it's like butt. One of yep. his butt cheeks is hanging out, and it's just like little yep. touches like that. I actually have a Nurgle, the Nurgle team. I haven't got to paint them yet, uh, but that's one of my favorite things is the rip in the pants. He's got a big tear yep. in his pants. And I can't wait to paint them because the normal stuff is gross and different, and that's kind of why I like it. Um, you now with this Raptor Squad, this is something that you painted for someone you said, or this is your. That your... was that was for my wife April. She she picked the color. She wanted she wanted a rainbow Raptor Squad, so she got it. <laughs> it's fantastic. I can't wait for people to see it. Like there's. Yeah. They look. I love. They're all distinctly different, but kind of the same. You know what I mean. You can tell they're yeah. part of the same group, but they're yeah. all very different. Yeah, she wanted all the colors, so. and she picked all the colors. I just went with it. <laughs> That's great. And where, where, what set is that from? That's just the Reaper minis. It comes in a pack of five. Or like, I mean, you probably you might have a set at your store. <laughs> really, I don't think I've checked that out. Yeah, I mean, they're really funny. I, for these, I tried to make them have, a, have like a little cuter face with the bigger eyes, and you know, they, most of them look like they're smiling. Right. Oh my god, I'm going back to these goblins, they're so good. Now these turkeys, what is that about? Which one? The turkeys, they look like? They're the footballs? Or they're slugs, maybe? I'm not really sure. They're, oh, those are slugs, they're okay. footballs. Um, it's for um, Thornbrook Valley Crushers, I think is the name of the football team. Fantastic. And uh, that's their that was their little that's their mascot or their theme actually because actually there's a couple of goblin mascots that I did that were in that it's like a white pair with red yep. spikes on it yep and then their mutated one is the snail and the snail starts coming out of them so that is nuts so yeah. do you find what do you do you what do you have more fun doing do you have more fun painting and building and stuff or do you have more fun playing the game. <sighs> It depends on the game. Bolt action, bolt action. I haven't played as much. It's a fun game, but building their models, it's 
I've been having a lot of fun theming them. Okay. You know, kind of going through um, 40K. I like painting the heroes, um, you know, the special models, the tanks, uh, you know, my big swarm lord. When it gets to painting the 30 gaunts, it gets kind of... <laughs> yeah, no, I could totally understand that. But as of late, I've been really enjoying painting them. Um, the hardest part, you know, people buy so many, you buy so many models and you have them sticked up on your shelf. Forever. Oh yeah, that, that's what this whole thing is behind me. Like you can't see it, yep. but I have like the three shelves in here. This all above me is stuff that needs to be painted. Yep. I have a, the table behind me. Um, there's Morty, so got to get him yep. painted. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's, it's crazy all this stuff. Like you said, even, even during a pandemic when we got nothing but time, yep. it's still hard to get all this stuff done. I have a King Tiger, but that needs to be painted. And I really want to paint it, but I told myself I have to finish all my other Germans first, which, by the way, I'm, tomorrow I'll be done with them so I can kick open that King Tiger. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> that anti-tank gun that you have was... The pack 40, yeah. Oh, my God, that thing is fantastic. Yeah, the, that was... The brick layout and everything, well, I was actually asking you about that. Um, you So you said you shaved those um, after that you, you molded them? Those, yep the blocks yep you pour them in a mold and then you pop them out when they're dry and then you just kind of i don't know you kind of crack them tap them and break them and they just kind of it's kind of nice because they didn't actually break apart and you just throw the pieces everywhere and the the funny thing about a lot of these models the, the some of that little t little tiny rubble that's actually kitty litter <laughs> is it really yep yep um one of the tricks i like to do with sand and that is uh you take uh, just some gorilla glue Put it on your base. Sprinkle some uh, sprinkle some baking soda and kitty litter on it, and you have sand and little tiny rocks. See, that's fantastic. That's actually going to lead into my next question about um, tips and things that you can give people when it comes to doing their modeling. You do because you do you know more advanced stuff to where your base building, which is which is amazing too, because building bases I can only imagine, and just painting and doing the models uh, alone is a lot of work adding the bases that you do um i can uh, it, it's like a whole another level so on i guess to a basic level how what, like you have tips anything you can let people know that are really getting into the hobby um what they should prepare for because it is a lot it sounds it's like with anything somebody's gonna tell you yeah yeah i can handle it but it there is like i said this area just behind me is just for the painting and, and modeling oh yeah the Biggest thing for people that are just getting into it, don't get discouraged. Um, it always, I mean, I do a good job painting, but there's people that do a lot better than myself. There's always somebody out there better than you when you first start. Don't don't get, get discouraged if you see someone else's job that you think that's better than yours. Because to be honest with you, when I see someone painting and they're like, yeah, it looks terrible, I can tell it's a beginner, but I don't care. I, the models look great. You're doing it. Uh, the only way I learn is by continuing doing it. I've I actually I have some of my somewhere I have some of my original models that I painted and they just I mean they look like a beginner painting them. <laughs> right, right. And it's definitely not it's definitely not cheap. Um, there's some good kits out there you can get starter kits. Um, find you know someone like yourself or me or if you want to get into painting, go hey I have an army I want to paint. You want to sit down? I like painting you know you know, the one or two people around. It's fun. You get a BS and, right. you know, I had a couple of guys over before all this pandemic stuff started and uh, I was helping him. He'd never painted before. He bought orcs, blood bowl team orcs. Mm. And I was helping him go through painting his orcs while uh, I was painting my stuff. So, so usually, usually, like you said earlier, usually someone, someone will help you in this hobby world. I mean, that at Bearded Brown Coast, there's a bunch of guys down there that are great. They'll talk to you. They'll help. I mean, you do, and... Yeah, see, that's what I did, is I, I remember talking to you a lot when we were in the yep. Gainesville store, and then Brandon and a couple other guys, if there's anything that I needed, like, specific details on or questions, I would always go and ask yeah. people. It's people are a lot more receptive than you'd think uh, when it comes to that, especially people that are good at it, because they really want to tell you uh, their right. tips and tricks, uh, which is great, um, but people are a lot more humble than, than, you, than, than you expect. Uh, oh, yeah. And of course, YouTube. I get some of my tips from YouTube. That's how I, when I first started doing the weathering on some of my tanks. I never done it before, so I had to look up kind of how people do it. And then you kind of 
develop your own strategies as you see colors. Like now I add baking soda water to my rust color and it looks like it's really clumped up pieces of rust and you know corrosion and stuff so right which i'm gonna and after we're done on this i'm gonna end up messaging you a hundred times because i'm gonna see because i was just looking at that uh the rusting that you have on on the the anti your anti-tank vehicle the thing we just mentioned earlier i can't remember yeah. i have terrible memory um, but right. but i'm looking at the rusting on it and it's just fantastic it just it makes it it makes it look it makes it look so much different because uh, people, well, you know, painting off the box is good too, but yep. adding those little touches is will definitely differentiate, and it makes it more fun for you. You don't have to sit there and just do yep. the same thing over and over, factory paint the same thing over and over and over again. I like to theme my stuff. Like my Tyranids are all in a swamp. Uh, my Space Marines are fighting the Tyranids, so they're in a swamp as well. So I mean, right. I wanted my Germans to be in a kind of a cityish village type of area, so. Um, I used the cobblestone as the basing and the bricks and made little buildings and stuff. So I have one of my 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 uh, pumas that actually looked like it drove through someone's hedge because it has all the all the uh, uh, flowers and stuff shoved in the front grill like it just drove through someone's. See, that's front fantastic. Yard. It's just those tiny little details that 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 give it they just make it pop so much more, especially when you're playing a game. Uh, it's really cool when people just come up and, and talk about the models and. Uh, and want to look at your stuff because like you see so many of the same things over and over and over again it's uh it's really cool just that's a, another great tip is just add little touches any little details it's fine it's not i mean it's it's your mini so at the end of the day who really cares exactly exactly as long as you're happy with your mini who cares who cares <laughs> right just use it and play and that's that's all yep. that matters and people that do care uh about what your mini looks like it doesn't matter like who, like in this it's, typically they have typically they have gray armies anyway the people that care oh <laughs> yeah that, that's a lot of my stuff is it? And, and i'm just looking at it I usually go oh my god it's amazing and then i and then i ask you if i see something that i want to learn like uh corrosion and stuff on yeah. armor uh, if i see somebody that has it it looks really good i then ask that person did you paint this oh okay how did you do this this and this and and yeah. and it's never like it's not a competition People want you to know how to get better at it. Uh, yeah, because people they love talking about it. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, it's a fan. I mean, we've been talking about it for 20 minutes or so. It's yep. it's a fantastic hobby. Uh, I do want to move over into yep. another thing that you do. Um, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but uh, you cosplay a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you. You did the Skywalker. You've done. Uh, you had the Witch King. Um, yep. You. When did you start doing that? Was that more? Was that like a, with your D and D days too, or did that come later? No, that came a lot later. I've only, I've only recently, uh, I think five years ago, really started cosplaying. Yeah. Uh, what got you into it? I've always been, always wanted to do it, but to be honest with you, I was always um, self conscious, I guess, because you always, I'm somewhat. Sometimes I'm somewhat a perfectionist, and I didn't want to go there, and people will, you know, like, oh yeah, your outfit looks terrible. <laughs> so what we're just telling people not to worry about with painting you thought about with cosplaying yeah exactly hey, oh, we all got our... yeah yeah but what i found out going to my first one is that people don't care they legit you there's people that show up in cardboard boxes and they love it and it was it was a very inviting community i had such a good time at my first con dressing up um, and then i got the bug from there right so i did the i have old luke i have the Witch King, and now actually since um since it's been I've been growing out the beard because I have Obi, old Obi Wan's outfit as well that I want to put on. So that's awesome. Yeah, because the Luke is fantastic. <laughs> um, you because you even have like his metal hand. How yep. uh, did you make that? Did you buy that? Like, what are, you made it? Yep, I made it. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. how did you like? What is it made of? So it's interesting. There's a. Oh man, I wish I could remember the band's name. You know the band that has the silver helmet on and they wear all the silver gloves. There's two of them, I think. Almost like they're wearing a bike helmet. I'm not sure. They, whenever I think of stuff like that, I usually think of Guar is the one that I think of a lot. Um, but the helmet and gloves, I don't remember. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I'm sure someone out there knows who yeah, we'll, At this uh, time, we'll find a picture post. Uh, Jeff, yeah. make sure you find a picture or whatever he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I can't remember the names, but. <laughs> But there was a um, company that made their cosplay stuff, and one of them they did plastic shrink wrap of their glove because they wore gloves with those metal plates all over them. 
Uh-huh. So I order those, cut them out, and then I take a black um, satin glove, I guess you could say, um, glued them to that, painted them up. I used uh, the studs are actually googly eyes. You can googly eyes make great studs. You just really glue, you glue them on there. The perfect size. You glue them on there and paint them silver. It's pretty funny because <laughs> I, I taste it. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> so you just thinking you have this like amazing costume on and just under it's just googly eyes. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. It's funny. I learned that from another cosplayer. It was, um, so, but yeah, the cosplay community, if you get into it, it's, it's very welcoming. Um, I was actually surprised. Uh, I met a couple, I guess you could say, um, professional cosplayers there and, you know, most of them are hot chicks, but they really like to talk. I mean, they don't, they like to talk their craft. If you're if you build your own stuff, they want to hear how you did it, and they'll tell you how to improve it, or they'll they'll be like, "It's great," and they'll talk about their costume. So I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, I love it. Yeah, it's like what we're talking about with the with doing the painting and stuff like that. And the hobby community is a lot more welcoming than than people seem to think because being in the environment that that we are in, a lot of times people in your geek culture or nerdy culture. Um, have are more um, introverted you know they don't yeah. necessarily go out you know that's why you're playing a game at your house with four of your friends because you don't want to be in an area but when so when you go out in it you don't expect them you know such a timid person that's not really outgoing uh, to be as inviting and you're like you said people really are there's always you could go as anything and, and if that's what you want and you're happy about it then people don't care there's not really yep. that like judgmental community because they came from a group of people that have been judged you yep. know it's only recent over the last decade that it's cool to be a nerd you know what i mean it's not it's not like D D wasn't something like nobody wore D D shirts and mario you know what i mean like it wasn't that wasn't yep. a thing uh so it's widely accepted and it's awesome you what was the first cosplay you said you did I did old Luke. That was my first one. The one that you have now. Yep. Yep. Really? That was the first one. Yep. Um, yeah, like I said, I had to get everything, try to get everything as close as I can. So, but. So I see you. You do one with uh, you have a Mara Jade. Uh, is that somebody yeah. that you know uh, outside of this? Or did you or did you go together? Like, how did you meet? Oh, she um she works at uh where I work as well and. Uh, She's 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 funny. She's a geek too. So yeah, she did a great Marge. She does a lot of uh, the um, see the face painting that people do, or they do the weird monsters and yeah yeah yeah. yeah. She does a, she does a lot of that. She's really really good at um, that. Was, so my brother in law does. He's the one that's um, the emperor. He he goes as the emperor. So oh, and he was the one that he had the mask on. Yep. Okay, yep. gotcha. And then the guy you can't see, who's very important if you do any major cosplaying, is the, he's called the handler. Without a handler, oh my Congress so far. He's the guy that carries a backpack. He, he takes care of you while you're there. Because when you're in costume, you can't do anything. <laughs> right. So Wait, so you said you had a handler while you were there. That's what they call him, a handler. Yeah, he's a buddy of mine. He's great. Without one of those... We were taking pictures. I didn't even notice my lightsaber battery was dying. He he comes up behind me, takes my lightsaber away from me, changes the batteries, and gives it back to me. That's fantastic. So you have like a cosplaying like roadie. Yeah, I mean that's it's, that's awesome. And you you'll find come to find out that you'll see that more and more. The guy that's with the person dressed up with the backpack. That's what he's there for. Is the because especially when I was the Witch King, I was wearing that full body black suit. Um, right, right. Um, and you made could, the weapon, right? Yep. Yep. I made that out. That was pretty fun. That was made out of foam, cardboard, and a whole lot of cutting. <laughs> <laughs> and do you um, you have pictures of these kind of things? Do you you post yep. these on your Instagram as well? You have all these photos? Yep. Yep. I cool. put them on Instagram. Usually when I go to cons, I like to put up as many pictures as I can. So. Yeah, because you, you've done the fantastic job. So you've just done the, the two cosplays? You've done the Luke and the, and the Witch King? Yep. And like I said, this um, next one I go to, I, um, I plan on going as old Obi Wan. Get the beard grown out. I use a, I use baby powder to make it more gray and. Nice. Well, I mean, it, the way things are going, you might not have to. It might be a, you know ten more years before we <laughs> before we're able to go out again. Exactly. So that's fantastic. So you said all the stuff that you use is is handmade. You make your robe as well. 
Um, I wish I could sew, but it was handmade, and this is going to sound funny, being, you know, 45 years old, but my mom didn't make it for me. That's amazing. <laughs> See, see, no, always, always take advantage of that. Never, uh, never be ashamed to say your mom made your your Luke Skywalker robe. Yeah, uh, you're at a Comic Con anyway, so what's it matter? Exactly. Yeah, yeah she loves doing it. She's great at it. So that's amazing. She, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Um, I appreciate you being my first guest. This has been a little wonky with the camera and. My daughter running around crazy, but it's well, I appreciate I appreciate you making it easy because I was actually a little a little worried about, man, how's this going to play out? You know I, what's going to happen? <laughs> this was, you're right. This is like we're just sitting down hanging out. I, love I know it. you're sitting there. Te- you're sitting there texting me, and you you know, and uh, you're like, because I know how, I know who you are. You're you're quiet. Yeah. You know, when we have conversations, it's it's me babbling, and you just kind of being like, yep, yep, <laughs> and then I'll ask you a question, and you'll answer it, and then I kind of ask you a longer question, and uh, yeah. um. But yeah, then I'm like, oh man, I gotta do all this research. So I was looking up your photos, which I've already seen, you know, because we're friends yeah. on Facebook and everything. Uh, and then I'm thinking, oh god, I gotta do these interview questions because I've only done a few interviews before. Uh, but then I was like, yeah, screw it. We talk enough to where I'll just ask the first question, how how it got started, and then we'll just go from there. You know, whatever you say, I'll just kind of bounce off what you talk about because you're already talking about it anyway. So. Uh, if anybody else out there wants to sit down on one of your interviews, they should, man, because it was super easy. And I appreciate I like, I love, that. And I love what you guys do. I mean, you guys try to get more people involved in the geek culture, so it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we 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 are trying to do it to where it's everybody. Like, like I said, I have another guy set up where he does um, uh, historical reenactments, and so he's a huge nerd, and we talk about like Disney and all kinds of other stuff. But he wants to. Uh, I was like, well, what are you really passionate about? He said history, World War Two. I don't know a ton about World War II other than what you kind of learn in school and then what I've learned through playing bolt action. Um, But I'm going to learn a ton of stuff and why not? You know, it's just something. It's just another part of of that world. So, uh, yeah, yeah, once again, thank you for being on. Um, And for one more time, your Instagram for people so if they want to check out your stuff. It's Antique Geek 26. You'll see my Luke Skywalker picture there. Yeah, he's got a lot of really good stuff and he's a very humble guy. All right, thanks for being on, Chris. I appreciate it, man. Yep, no problem. Thanks for having me.